Good morning. Our Old Testament reading today is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. I am focusing on verse 5. Love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. When I learned that I was going to be preaching from this Deuteronomy text, I was thrilled. Ever since I was little, my mom and I always recited verse 5 before school. Love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. That is a very powerful statement. Now, in a way, that can be really hard to do, to love God. I'm going to dissect verse 5 into three different parts. Love God with all your heart being number one. Love God with all your soul being number two. And love God with all your strength being number three. Let's start off with part one. Love God with all your heart. How do we do that? Sometimes it's hard to love God. It may be hard to love God when bad things happen to you. Your family member is sick. You lose a loved one. You lose a job. You don't do well in school. You don't make the team. A family member is on drugs. Why does God let this happen? Unfortunately, we don't know exactly why. What we do know is God loves us, but sometimes we take his love for granted. When bad things happen, God wants us to lean on him for comfort. He wants us to know we are not alone. Bad things will happen. Life will get messy. But to be able to get through the tough times, we need to lean on God. It is our job to love him with all of our hearts. Next is to love God with all of your soul. According to Google Dictionary, Soul is a noun that has two different meanings. First, soul is the spiritual or immaterial part of a human being or animal regarded as immortal. And second, soul is an emotional or intellectual energy or intensity, especially as revealed in a work of art or an artistic performance. So God is asking us to love him with an intense energy. How the heck are we supposed to do that? One way of loving God is to talk to him. Tell him what's on your mind. Give 20 minutes of your time to God a day, whether it's taking a walk around your neighborhood and having a silent conversation with God, or if it's coming to church and worshiping God with other members of the congregation. He just wants to hear you. He wants to know that you love him. Love God with all your soul. Lastly, love God with all your strength. Now, this one was especially hard for me this year. As all of you know by now, since I'm standing up at the pulpit, I am a senior. I just graduated from Lake Highland, and I will be attending the University of South Florida in Tampa, majoring in cellular and molecular biology, hoping to one day become a doctor. I am happy where I ended up. I wouldn't change anything. But if you were to ask me a couple months ago, am I happy? I don't know what I would have told you. The end of my junior year was a time of excitement and also a time of pure stress. I was becoming a senior. I was at the top of the food chain. I made it. I was ready to see what God had in store for me. What I didn't realize was that senior year is a stressful time. Homework, college applications, drama with friends. There were so many things piling up in my life. I felt like I was drowning. I thought I couldn't finish everything I needed to do. I was stressed and I was scared. I pushed away people when they tried to help me. There was a time when I was so stressed that I didn't want to get out of bed. I was so anxious that it was hard to get up and go to school in the mornings. In that dark, in, in that dark time in my life, I pushed God away. I didn't go to him when I needed him the most. I thought I was okay. But this very stressful time is when I really needed to turn to God. I needed to love God with all my strength. When I did go to God in prayer, I felt better. I felt like God was leading the way. But then I found out I was not admitted to my top choice in college. I started to push God away once again. But instead of letting that sadness and stress eat away at me, I let God in and I prayed. God showed me that it would be okay. I felt comfort for the first time in a long time. And now it's because I let God into my life again. The familiar poem, Footprints in the Sand, really helped me put my problems into perspective. One night, I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. 
After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest points, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times in my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you, never, ever, during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. When I read this poem, I looked back on my own life. When I was in the dark parts of my life, I thought I was pushing God away. But what I didn't realize was that God didn't go anywhere. He was carrying me and making sure I would get through it. Love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. That is what we need to do every day. <clears throat> I'm thankful for my mom, Jane, my sister, Rachel, and my grandma, Pat, for being the first ones to teach me about God's love and for sticking with me through thick and thin. God loves us with all of his might, so as his children, we need to love God with all of ours. The Bible tells us that we need to love God and spread his love to others. You, as the congregation at Park Lake, have shown me God's love. Dr. Dan and Dr. Helen taught me how amazing God truly is and how to show his wonders to others. My youth leaders, Elizabeth, Justin, Meredith, Brett, Alice, Aaron, and Matt, have shown me how God can be in my everyday life, not just the church. Thank you all for being my second family and showing me that God's love is stronger than anything in the world.